Hey everyone, welcome to the Active Towns channel. I'm John Zimmerman, and in this episode, I'm delighted to welcome back Brandon Lust, who many of you know as American Feetzer on Twitter and YouTube. And since this conversation is a long one, I'm gonna keep this introduction very short and get us right into the action. Thank you so very much for tuning in. It's always wonderful having you along for the ride. I hope you enjoy my conversation with Brandon Lust. Absolutely delighted to have my good friend Brandon Lust back onto the podcast. Brandon, welcome. Hey, John. Thanks for having me back. First time on video. Yeah, first and, time. Uh, first time on yeah. video, and and this was actually planned way back when we did the first podcast because uh, when we did that episode, you were still living up in Minneapolis, but you knew that you were going to be mm-hmm. moving to. Uh, Carmel, Indiana. And so we we promised that we would get back together on the podcast to get some of your impressions and your your reflections of what it's been like in your new community. How long have you been there now? End of May. So for May 28th, we moved here um, and whatever it is now, uh, pandemic times. I have no clue. Um, <laughs> no. Yeah. When, when we talked last, it was quite literally a week before we moved, I think. Right. And you asked about doing a video podcast and I was sitting in a pretty nearly empty apartment and thought, Mm-mm, nope. Not doing this. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're in a home. I have a study. I have, right. some thing, I have some things behind me. So it looks like I have my act together. And uh, now I'm ready for this video podcast and I'm already so excited about it. I'm ready for doing this for a third time. So fantastic. Well, let's get through the second time and then we'll think about the third time. Uh, but, uh, right. uh, that, that's, uh, I, I love it. And I love the enthusiasm. And in fact, one of the, the, the things that's been so infectious about you is the fact that you have such passion and enthusiasm. infectious, John. Yeah, well, I know it's, it's, it's bad. This, it's it's, okay. it's a bad use of words, you know, in in a time of a pandemic. But you know what I mean. Uh, I mean, people are flocking to you. So you you just hit a milestone. You just hit a, a little bit more than nine thousand people on your your Twitter following. Who would have thunk it, man? Yeah, especially since uh, while my. Twitter does claim I opened it in 2011. I opened it for maybe a couple of weeks and then said, eh, nope. And I didn't actually start using it for, uh, I didn't, I, I messed with it in 2017, but I didn't really start using it until 2019, uh, a couple months before I went to the Netherlands again. And, um, by the time I had went there and, you know, met with Mark by bicycle Dutch, um, and, and got some more Dutch time in, I was around like well, three, four, 500 followers. I thought I would come home and everybody would just unfollow and it would be over with. But then I dove down a Dutch rabbit hole and, um, here we are. Here we are. Here we are. Yes. Well, I, before we in this conversation, dive into the Dutch rabbit hole. Let's uh, l- let's start off where we sort of left off, which was um, you making that move to Carmel. And I'm going to pull up a photo here that is just you know quintessential uh, Carmel. <laughs> it's one of the first places that you sort of pointed out uh, to me, and and or at least I think it is. Maybe it is. Is this, is this, this is the restaurant, right? With the yeah, big burger? Loves burgers. That is yeah. the only reason I knew about Carmel. That's the <laughs> only reason that we moved here right. is because back in 2011, um, there was this show uh, called Man Versus Food. Yep. And he, uh, Adam Richmond, I think is the guy's name. He came here and he wanted to eat a burger called the Big Ugly, which is just a big, ugly burger. It's, right. it's massive. And my wife and I were living over in Illinois, where I'm from at the time. And I said, oh, we need to go over there. I want to I want to have one of their burgers, not necessarily that. And we came over here and I got out of the car and I didn't care about any of this stuff. I didn't care about bikes. I didn't right. care about walking. I was Mr. Motors. Um, I remember getting out of the car and looking around and I saw people walking. I saw people biking and the Monon Trail existed, but not that fancy Monon Boulevard that 
we will see well, later. I mean, probably. To, to be to be honest, I mean, literally, this is a great photo to to illustrate the yeah. The, yeah. This is still the old Monon Trail. Yes. So yeah. I saw this and yeah. I mentally noted it. Yeah. I, I I cared, but I didn't. But I never forgot it. Right. And so yeah, had I never come to that restaurant, I would have never known about Carmel. Yeah. I wouldn't live here. Yeah. Yeah, that's hilarious. Yeah, and mm. uh, and 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 this this photo here, uh, you know, is is just a little bit closer to that intersection. You can see the old stuff and the stop line there, and then you can just get a little glimpse of what be, has become was transformed from the Monon Trail mm. into Monon Boulevard. Uh, yeah. And and it just it becomes just you know fantastic as you make your way further into the transformation that took place of what was just a beloved rail trail, but it was just a rail trail, you know, yes. it's just, it's Thank just you, a rail trail. Thank you, Railroad, for dying. And, and, and now it's, it's like, it's a rail trail plus. 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 plus, 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 plus. plus. I mean, yeah. it's a place. Now it's like a destination. It's a it's a gathering place. I mean, the things that that are here, uh, you know, art here, you know, and and just all sorts of you know places for people to gather and have a good time. Mm -hmm. This is now. Did you really appreciate that this was here when you made that move from Minneapolis, or was this part of it a surprise? Nope. Um. I knew this was here. Okay. I think, I think this, you know, I'll probably get my dates wrong. Um, sure. I think they really started to jam all this in place uh, around 2017 and I think you uh, finished. Okay. I, I don't know how long it took them, but, um, there, there if you just want to Google Moan on Boulevard, right. there's, a, so there's your first visit articles. though to Bob's, this wasn't existing yet. Bubs. Bubs. This didn't No, exist. my first no, no, yeah, no. Yeah. It was 2011, and I didn't come back to Carmel until we moved into the house May 28th, 2021. See, that's what I was trying to get to, is that, okay, so... <laughs> yeah, I didn't come back. Yeah, so you didn't come back, So, but you did some research online, and you were like, oh, wow. Yep, what I remember it. from Bubs back in 2011, the trail, cool, mm -hmm. but at the same time, <laughs> this is extraordinary. Yeah, so as soon as I started to look it up online and saw yeah. everything they had done over the past decade, even though it's two decades in the making, yeah, I just said, uh, and, and we had the we had kind of the option to pursue trying to solidify going to the Netherlands. Okay, um, right. for for my wife's career, she had some things on the table that we could have really went towards, but we were really burnt out on international moving. I mean, Brazil around Brazil and back was, was very tiring. Yeah. Um, but we did want the car light lifestyle. So yeah. had, had we not found Carmel, we may have pursued that, but I found Carmel and I thought a oh, domestic's easy. Right. All right. Yep. Yeah. This'll do. Fantastic. This'll do. <laughs> so you made the move down. Um, Describe what that feeling was like when you made that move and and you started to feel and started started to experience this infrastructure in particular. Um, whereas before, I mean, you were just experiencing it visually and and virtually online. What was it like to actually like roll down? I mean, here's a this orange bike is your 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 old workhorse bike. Um, you know, that's the one you brought with you, uh, from, from Minneapolis. What was it like to be rolling down the road, rolling down the pathways, you know, yeah. when you, you finally got there? Uh, big difference because I, I had to put forth a bunch of effort to try to do a Dutch cycling lifestyle up in Minnesota mm -hmm. and they have a basic groundwork in place for that to happen, but you do have to put effort Right. into it and you need to want it here. Um, oh, it was, it, I get, I don't know how else to sum it up other than I get on my bike and I go, I don't pull up Google maps and say, oh, okay, does this look safe or, oh, is, is there bike parking? Um, if I pull up Google maps, it's just because, well, I'm new here and I got to figure out how to get there. Right. The good thing is, is there's, there's darn near a multi-use path 
everywhere I need to go. Right. The good thing about Carmel is that they, and I quote the leaders, they don't believe in on-street bike paths. Right. So yeah. they they have 400 summitish 400 ish kilometers of uh, off street separated multi use paths. Right. So that makes it easy to get anywhere. Yeah. Um, now, in some of those, some of those multi use paths, as we'll see, because we're going to pull up some video and, and see it, some of those are really just basically sidewalks. Mm-hmm. But, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. But, uh, so, yeah. so real quick, since uh, I'm sure this is going to garner some attention from from our viewers, uh, extraordinary um, treatment here. So this is a brick street. This is the the car access part of the whole network. And I think we do have an overhead coming up here real soon so that folks mm-hmm. can see the entire scope of it. Um, yep. uh, wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's uh, Jan Gill or Jan Gill. Yeah. How do you yeah. pronounce it? Yeah. And Jeff Speck. Um, they're the two visionaries behind all of this. Mm-hmm. And thank goodness they put it all together. It, it's beautiful. Yeah. Absolutely beautiful. It is a place to be. It's yeah. not a, I don't think it's a destination. It's just, it's just a place to be. Look, I mean, look at all those bikes parked there. Right. There's right. Kids, adults. Unfortunately, there's not too many cargo bikes and right, I blame right. the local bike businesses. Well, eventually, you know, eventually mm. we'll get those cargo bikes. I mean, <clears throat> and, and we'll see some photos of your, your cargo bike and cargo bike and, and also some of the, uh, the video of you out on the urban arrow. Um, mm. I, I'm, I know for a fact that it's garnering attention. People are, are, are asking you about it. Are they breaking their necks? <laughs> yeah. Breaking their necks. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Exactly. And, and it's not just, it's not just a, and to your point, it's not just a flow through facility anymore. This is a place where, you know, you're, you're going to other, places there's playgrounds mm-hmm. there's uh public space areas there's restaurants i mean yep. this didn't exist 10 years ago 15 years ago just didn't exist no. yeah, i mean there was a basic concrete path there right but this wasn't a place to be it was a pass-through right. um yeah so i mean there there's always families there with uh it's it's a huge destination for you know moms dads and taking their kids and uh, yeah, I'm passing through there cause I'm going somewhere, but uh, yeah. Well, I mean, not always. I mean, sometimes you and Tatiana are, are going to a destination in that area. Yeah. The place comes alive. Uh, we moved here. What? So summer. Um, so summer, fall, it comes alive winter. It's a little bit more dead, but there's sure. things going on. Uh, but yeah, during, during the, uh, the non-winter months, it's they Carmel, Carmel has a lot of things going on. I mean, there's always yeah. live music or some sort of vendor or some reason to be there. Um, they ha- they have things called Meet Me on Main where they close down Main Street and there's live bands and sometimes it goes till I think midnight or something. Yeah, uh, you can just go be, and yeah. it, it's so amazing to be in a in a un- United. I was going to say American, but you know that's <laughs> right. that's North America in a, in the United States in a city suburb, whatever. <laughs> and, and be able to have city space for people, not just city space for cars. It's, it's, it's an odd thing to experience. And, and I'm really thankful for it. I'm going to pull up a, uh, an image here, uh, of an overhead shot so that we can get a, a little bit more of a, of a fun um, look to this. So let's, uh, let's cue this up here. So there's a, a couple of, we'll start on this one here. Total and CGI. It's not even real. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Carmel you, doesn't somebody exist. told you that, right? Oh, somebody, I've heard that this, yeah. People say, is this CGI? I'm, nope. It's not. <laughs> it's just yeah. good design. It's good design. It pops. It's amazing. I was up on, on this, this, Basically, this is a parking garage, folks. Yeah. <laughs> we, Unfortunately, we, we I rode our, you we, up here on a gray day. Yeah. Well, we rode up on our bikes and then looked over and 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 shot some video and took some photos. Not not the this photo. This is at night. We it was during the day uh, when yep. I did that in June. But yeah, this gives gives you a little bit of an overview of what it's like. So 
Uh, walk us through. Start from the the bottom left corner, and I'm gonna. I, I'll actually um, zoom out a little bit so folks can actually see that this is uh, 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 the different bits of infrastructure here, and you can walk them through mm-hmm. from from bottom left on through all the different pieces of in- infrastructure that's in place here. Sure. So there we go. Okay, you see the little cyclist. Yeah, uh, I wanted to see that little outline cyclist there. there. So. So what's, yeah. what is interesting here is we've got, we've got a, okay. So down bottom left, we've got a, uh, one way bike path, um, further out of frame is another wide sidewalk, right. but that one way bike path goes North. Mm-hmm. Then you go out and you got the street and there's a little bit of parking and whatnot there in the middle. That particular section is those stones set up um people to sit on and then there's the fountains the right. fountains light up in different colors the kids geez they eat that they eat that stuff up they're out there running around in their right. bathing suits and and enjoying that and the parents are just hanging out and it, it's a good thing for everybody right um and then you uh, so right past where the water is making the pavement wet pedestrians are supposed to walk there right this is where we run into a problem so we bit. got, yeah, yeah. yeah so we, we got these mixing zones and then, so then beyond that is where bikes are supposed to be, but pedestrians go out there. Right. That's a problem that still needs to be ironed out here yeah. in Carmel. And right. I say, get rid of the space for cars and kick them out of there. They don't belong there <laughs> and problem solved. But right. the mayor, or I'm sorry, yeah, yeah. Uh, people didn't like that idea. Uh, so then you got beyond that, um, another red brick for cars. And yeah. then on the other side of that, another one-way bike path that goes south right and then a big sidewalk so yeah. this was just yeah beautiful yeah yeah it's it's really amazing and uh, of course of course the first time we uh, we we post a little video that that we shot uh, you know from that day and uh, and we also posted that and it was amazing to see some of the the feedback of going wait a minute You've got the red brick. Why didn't you use the red brick brick for the cyclists? <laughs> They're the gray. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So why? Yeah. Exactly. We're on this side of the Atlantic. That's exactly. why. And, and, well, and but, we don't. But not yeah. necessarily because right up the road in in car in uh, in Indianapolis for the uh, the cultural <laughs> the trail they did cultural the red brick. Trail. Yeah. 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 So the thing that that we all have in common here in the United States is we don't like to talk to each other and, and yeah. agree on a standard. We like to just. <laughs> you know, willy nilly do it, do yeah. it all differently. So, yeah. so that's, that's yeah, part that of is it. why the other thing that's interesting to note here is that there's a whole underground aqua network that supports all this greenery. Right. Yeah. Uh, something Civ- Civa cell or Siva cell. I don't know. It's, it's this really interesting thing okay. to where they can keep all this uh, hydrated mm-hmm. uh, feed nutrients into the system and so that it supports all of the green space that they've incorporated right into this uh, and how, how does it handle like the the downpours does it does it is this pretty pretty permeable and does it sink down pretty pretty well yeah so um haven't lived here a long time but sure. didn't take too long to experience ridiculous rain right um every time i've been through here i don't see standing water now i see standing water elsewhere in the city sure sure but they did this right. I mean, they yeah. they hit this on the head. I, I mean, there's, you know, some permeable pavements and, and yeah. other things in place to take care of it. But yeah. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. and as you'll recall, when I visited you in June um, that morning, it had been raining pretty hard. And in fact, you mm-hmm. had your umbrella with you uh, on the bike. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Yep. Yeah. Good stuff. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it, it was fantastic, and uh, this next shot really exemplifies some of the the places that are conducive to to the outdoor life and and gathering people from the community. Uh, yeah, let what, me talk about this. Can please, I? Yeah, go for it. Okay, so this is Midtown Plaza. Mm-hmm. Uh, you'll see down here in the right hand corner a uh, thing that says Carmel. That is, they put that up, that that caramel motif, um, recently, I think right before we moved here. And it's supposed to be this selfie board mm-hmm. to where people can go and take a selfie in front of it or, you know, photo in front of it. Like, right. hey, I'm in Carmel. Right. The irony is you have to stand 
on a road where there's two-way traffic. <laughs> so note to Carmel, yeah. fix that. Um, but on the other side is a huge television. So right. they normally have uh, some interesting things going on there. They have like uh, a video reel talking about all of Carmel's roundabouts. We're at 140 now um, and a bunch of interesting things like that. But uh, what's what's really nice, I think, that uh, that goes on here is – this really serves families throughout the week. You don't have to utilize this just on a weekend. Um, they have afternoon movies that get played here, family movies, kids movies. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then there's a surround sound system set up. Um, so they, they have afternoon movies, uh, family movies, kids movies uh, of an afternoon. There's a surround sound system put in. And so parents can bring the kids down. The kids can play watch movies there. The parents can order in food or order in drinks or just sign on to the city Wi-Fi and uh, do whatever they want. Right. Um, and what I was saying was that this is this is a prime example of how your tax dollars can go to work for you mm-hmm. and actually get you things of value uh, that benefit you and your family and, and, and everything else like that. Uh, again, something else we don't normally see in the United States. Right, right. And... One of the neat things too is, as you mentioned, you know, the there, there's a street that r- runs right there in front of where that mural is. On the other side of that street is where the uh, the bike lockers are, and there's uh, mm. there, there's an public that's restrooms. A, there's public restrooms. There's bike lockers. There's an indoor um, bike facility, and there's repair uh, things that are in there. So just extraordinary yeah. some of the, the the amenities and the features that were thought through. So. Yeah, water fountains, um, places to plug in your cell phone and charge your cell phone, um, yeah, everything like that. There's, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, good stuff. So that's that's Carmel. So so I, I wanted to give the, set the stage with some of the visuals of that and then give you an opportunity to just kind of like reflect back. Because um, the last time we, we talked online here, you know, in the, in the podcast, it was you were getting ready to make that move. You and Tatiana were, were packing things up and really, uh, you know, anticipating the move. Uh, what's it been like? Yeah, so worthwhile, completely. Um, very happy we came here. Uh, again, justified staying domestic. Um, it has... Carmel's not perfect. We, we we still have a lot of work to do here, and I plan on being a thorn in the side of the city to say what you're doing wrong and how we can make it better, but also exemplify what we're doing right. It has enabled car light living. Uh, our car sits in the garage. It gets out once or twice a month, maybe, um, but it's just made it so easy to live by in our case, uh, e-cargo bikes. Um, I, I, I do have some complaints. Uh, the roundabouts are wonderful. We have 140, we're going to have 141, 142, probably this summer. Um, driving in roundabouts is so nice. Uh, I hate intersections. I, I almost can't stand to go someplace that has intersections anymore. Um, it makes it, it just feels calmer, but, uh, riding a bike and walking on all the roundabouts is better. Um, one problem is that the traffic engineers here in Carmel seem to think that they need to put in some double lane roundabouts in a bunch of areas. And I think that that is ridiculous um, because it just decreases safety. It prioritizes cars. Their double lane roundabouts are put in for cars, not because of cars. So, they need to start doing more single lane just to make it safer for people. My, my wife gets to a double lane roundabout, gets off her bike and walks through. She says she does not feel safe. Um, and that should be the metric. So if, if somebody can't cycle through a roundabout and they have to get off their bike, then you're not doing your job right. And you need to re-engineer the road. Good news is with all those double lanes, we can take a lane away. All we have to do is just do it. And that's pretty simple. Um, yeah, no, no more of the, won't somebody think of the motorist mentality, right. won't somebody think of the bike and the pedestrian. 
Well, it's it's redefining the space. And just to be clear, when you're saying that, you know, navigating the roundabout, you and and, and Tatiana are not trying to navigate through the roundabout. You're trying to use those side paths and the and the bike and pedestrian facilities yes. just to get across the the non roundabout portions of the roundabout. And, yes. and to your point is that the engineering has is been such that it's prioritizing the through movement of motor vehicles, the yeah. fast through movement of motor vehicles, and therefore it's difficult for the drivers. Um, even if they wanted to, <laughs> it's difficult for them to even, you know, be able to understand that, you know, they need to be able to, to yield to all of you in the quote unquote cross crosswalks in those yes, areas. The, the, de the, the design the, is such that it makes it difficult for them to even quote unquote follow the law. Yes. The law is that they do not, and this is state law and this is what curses all the United States uh, state laws pretty much. Um, the motorist does not have to stop it. Uh, at a uh, roundabout crossing, for example, um, if if they see somebody waiting to cross, they are supposed to yield if the person is in the crosswalk, uh, whether that be an intersection or a roundabout. So basically, you have to say, OK, I'm going to put my life at risk to get on the right side of the law to where that they have to stop and yield for me. So. For example, the mother pushing the stroller has to push the stroller out into oncoming traffic to be in the right of law so that that motor stops. Um, it, it, it's a problem. And um, there's, from what I've heard, and, and you know, I'm not going to point fingers or, or say this for sure, but I know that by default, the mayor in Carmel wants single lane roundabouts. It's his traffic engineers that say, oh, oh, but Mr. Mayor, we need a double lane because of this or that or the other. Well, to that, I say those traffic engineers need to get out of their SUVs and ride a bike or walk to work a few times and, um, you know, reevaluate the decisions that they're making because uh, it's going to kill somebody. And, you know, to, to support level of service for cars, no, that's not good. So the, the more double lane roundabouts that go in here around Carmel, I start to think those traffic engineers need a new job because um, it's, it's making – good design intent, um, really hostile for people just to support throughput of cars, level of service for cars. Right. Right. Well, I'm glad, glad we got that out of the way because of course, Me roundabouts, too. <laughs> uh, roundabouts are really what has put a uh, caramel on the map in the sense of the yeah. fact that they, they did double down and do that. I'm a huge fan of roundabout roundabouts. Um, but I'm a huge fan of roundabouts designed properly, uh, mm -hmm. just like in, in my most recent or, or, or a recent uh, uh, episode that I did with Leonard Nout. We talked extensively about how to do roundabouts properly so that yes. they encourage slow speed, so that they encourage prioritization. I would love vulnerable. for the city of Carmel yeah. to hire MobyCon and, and Leonard and his team to come in here and, yeah. and give a, you know, I couldn't cost that much money and it's not like we don't have any money here to come in and take, and they will give the city of Carmel a, an evaluation of what we've got and, yeah. and their two cents and how we could make it better. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Please. <laughs> so one of the things that you did, I'm going to shift gears here because uh, okay. it's a good time to shift gears to one of the things that, uh, that sort of bit you and bit you hard once you got there, because you, you did find yourself like doing lots and lots of really cool trips, you know, everyday functional utilitarian trips. You did the same thing in, in, in Minneapolis when you were there, but, uh, you mm -hmm. really got, got on board with it here. And then, uh, along came, you know, a new addition to the family, and uh, <laughs> so, what the Thanks, heck COVID happened wave here? Number three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So, no, quite literally, we thought yeah. that okay, the world's going to get better, and then it didn't. Yeah. And so, I just said, well, we don't need a travel budget again. Uh, and by the way, we're not doing frivolous travel. I mean, half our family's in Brazil right. and everything like that. But right. uh, I just said, well, let's just take that money and reinvest it in our domestic life. And here we are with uh, paper door, which means pepper expensive in Dutch <laughs> because this thing was pepper expensive and 
I'm not going to explain pepper expenses. So, so, anyway. so I, I know what you mean, and I'm sure most of the audience kind of understands. And if you don't understand, just uh, just Google it. Pepper expensive. Um, <laughs> for for those who don't know what we're looking at, this is an Urban Arrow. Tell us about the Urban Arrow. How did you you come to to, to settle on this particular uh, SUV of the cargo bike uh, era? Yeah, so I am a work cycles ambassador through and through. I love them. Best, best Dutch bikes, hands down. Yeah. Um, however, I did need a Bach feet that I could just get parts for quickly, have serviced quickly here in the U.S. I mean, you know, you, you roll into a U.S. bike shop with a super Dutch bike and they're like, what is this? You know, and so that's why I didn't buy the work cycles um Bach feet. So I went with this, uh, again, just for serviceability parts and all that type of stuff. Um, and to add more utility, but the main motivation for even getting it was that my wife and I had found ourselves, um, wanting to go places by bike, but be able to have a conversation, uh, and, and enjoy things together while making that trip. Mm -hmm. And if, you know, anybody knows anything about United States bike infrastructure. It's that riding side by side is almost impossible because they're so narrow and you've got cyclists coming one way and the other, and you got to get over and you can't talk to anybody while you're going somewhere. Right. So I just got it because I wanted to be able to shove her up front and she could ride stress-free because I mean, she's not, she's not like everybody else who's super sure. confident on a bike. Um, but we can go places together and we can just talk and look at things together. And that was the, that was the point of getting the urban arrow. And so she rides up there, she's comfortable and it turns a lot of heads. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I have a secret to share with you here. I've already interviewed Tatiana. So, uh, really? Yeah. So no idea. Uh, she, I, I've got her story already documented. So, uh, oh. is she, she shared a whole bunch of secrets and, and all of that and, okay. uh, good stuff. But one of the, one of the cool aspects of this, obviously you've got, uh, it looks like some five gallon, uh, paint, uh, oh. um, you know, cans in here. It looks like you're getting it off to the, the recycling, yep. uh, center, um, but yeah, she, she actually fits there. She jumps into the front mm -hmm. and she's little, little smaller than you, a little shorter than you. She, she can Everybody fit inside. Is. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Everybody's stuff. smaller than me. <laughs> but, and, and I gotta go, I gotta go back to this shot. I mean, what a great shot from the fall. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. I'm sorry. I mean, you can, you can take a lot of car trips, um, but you have to go seek out a drive like this. Yeah. I don't have to seek this out. This is just part of my route to go to another part of town. Right. And, and I mean, physical activity, um, does something for you mentally. Oh, yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. So one of the things that you've started to do recently is, is produce some videos, um, about, you know, everyday types of trips. Talk a little bit about what sort of motivated you to, um, to do that. And, and, and while you, you talk through that, I'm going to actually play a video, um, in the background while you're sort of talking about that, because you, you had mentioned to mm -hmm. me that this is actually one of the videos that, that was most influential to you. Um, and so this will just be playing in the background. I'm going to turn the, the volume down on it so that it's not distracting for us. It's a very Zen-like, uh, you know, uh, footage that, that's sort of happening in the background. And, and, oh, boy. Uh, um, so, A, first explain what we're looking at and then transition into some of the footage and some of the, the, the videos that you're starting to shoot these days. And I'm going to actually adjust this so that we can see the logo um, in the corner here. There, there we go. you go. Perfect. Yeah. So I will say that this is not necessarily related to what I'm doing with videos. Okay? Yeah. It's a different, different uh, style completely. Yeah. 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 So this is, this is one of my, this is, this is fuel that keeps me going. This is, um, and Tomas, if I butcher your last name, I am so sorry. He'll, he'll Tomas forgive Schleifer. you. Tomas Schleifer. <laughs> um, he is, um, a city, um, 
he, he captures cities uh, with with his camera and he's mainly based out of Amsterdam. Uh, also goes to Tel Aviv. He's been in Tel Aviv actually as of this recording um, for a month or two. But um, wow, uh, his work is is unrivaled in my opinion. He he captures Amsterdam and the life of Amsterdam. People on bikes, foot, tram, cars, uh, unlike anything I've seen. And so I watch and consume his media regularly because it helps fuel me with inspiration. Uh, this is one of my favorite videos. Um, I don't have it in front of me which street this is. Um, and of course, because we're recording, I'm not going to remember it. But this is this is just a, I don't know, 12, 13, 14, 15 minute video where you can just watch, uh, pay attention to all the details. You see something unfold. Um, he does he does a lot of things like this. He cycles through Amsterdam. He takes photos. He does where he stays in one place and, and just captures a street happening and seeing how cities can be designed. And so that, you know, car culture isn't dominant and there's other ways of living, seeing, seeing all this life. This is what brought me into doing my advocacy in the first place. Um, the, this right here is the only reason that I'm here now because I saw this in the Netherlands. I experienced it. Uh, without that, I'd be driving an F-350 diesel and, and voicing my opinion against bike lanes. Um, this is just beautiful. This is living. This is, this is what a city should look like. This is, this is life happening. Uh, yeah. so, and to be yeah, clear, yeah, so to, to, I'm going to jump in and just say this. Um, to be clear, it wasn't specifically just these videos, this type of video. It was right. the fact that that you and Tatiana had the opportunity to go to the Netherlands, experience it, and that was mm. your true aha moment. And folks, we do talk about that extensively in the first uh, podcast episode, um, you know, last year. So uh, we don't have to go through all of that and rewind to all of that, but. That's really what planted the seed. I get the sense mm -hmm. that this video is, and one of the reasons why it's such a favorite video for you is it brings back that mm -hmm. memory for you. Yeah, yeah. No, I didn't know about Thomas until after uh, that trip and diving down the rabbit hole. But the, yeah, this is just one of my favorite pieces. Um, but yeah, uh, so I, I love all that and I can't duplicate his work, but um I have started making some videos here uh, in Carmel, not like this, but uh, maybe I'll do something similar on an amateur level. But uh, mine have been uh, just mounting a camera on my hat and going for a ride to do typical everyday errands, whether it's a grocery store or somewhere else. And I just quite literally started that series. So we'll see what it, where it goes from there. But um, yeah, so th this Thomas, Thomas, uh, Schleifer is, is yeah, just, yeah. he, he helps, he just helps keep the fire going, especially with the pandemic, keeping me out of the Netherlands right. for over two years now, it starts to fade. The United States starts to beat you down. I have to keep consuming this media to keep going and thank goodness for his work. Well, what I love about it is it's so Zen-like, you yeah. know, like I'm saying, you just, you, you could just, I, I, it, it was wonderful just having that on in the background while you were talking because mm -hmm. there's just that rhythm. It's like the ballet of, of the city movement and, and it's just so, so super cool. So yeah, let's, let's pull up a, a, a video, um, you know, of your sort of your experiential, um, you know, stuff that you're, you're, you're working on. What I really want to do is, and I didn't notice this and, and realize this until today, but you have a three-minute long video um, from you know seven months ago from when, when you, in fact, just before, it was like a, a few days or, or weeks before, a week before I, I came to visit you. I don't know if you knew this or not, but or, or know this or not, but that three-minute video is one of your most watched videos of all time. Did you know that? No. You have to know that. Oh, that thing. Uh, yeah. I can't remember what account picked it up. Some uh, some Twitter account picked it mm -hmm. up and she retweeted and said, I don't remember what she wrote about it. Yeah. Um, but all of a sudden, boom, it drove a whole bunch of views and good. 
I mean, I don't care about the eyes on me. I just care about more people knowing that this exists in the United States and that you can build stuff like this with money rather than another lane for cars. Well, and and what's great about this, you know, given what you're doing right now, the type of work that you're doing now, is that seven months ago, you, you, you did a little bit of that. You did even probably before you even were like really contemplating it and thinking hard about it. You just went out and did it. And mm. it, again, it's one of your most watched videos that you had. It's it's gorgeous. It's 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 wonderful. Um, again, yeah. it, it, this was shot just in the, in in the week or two before I arrived to to visit with you. So it's got that spring like early summer sort of feel. This is in May, and and I came to visit you in June. And uh, yeah, I mean, what what a great feel. Yeah, it's, I mean, Monon Boulevard is. Uh, so, I mean, I could even say sure. It's it's a little bit over the top. Sure. It doesn't all have to be like that. I mean, I don't need my entire city looking like Monon Boulevard. That's fine. It's beautiful to have, but it does remind you of the Netherlands in in a in a way that you're just like, oh, this space was made for not the car. Right. <laughs> and um, so we can have this, and then like Monon Boulevard light and light and light. As long as as long as when you're in a space and you're trying to go from one part of a city to another you feel like you belong, not that you're fighting for your life to get there. Right. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, <laughs> I wish I had had realized that that video existed, you know, back when I, I posted uh, the video that I shot in June, because some uh, of the people were like, where are all the people? And I'm like, you, you don't understand. It literally it, was it like raining cats raining. and dogs, you know, that morning mm-hmm. when I went to go see you. Um, yeah, yeah well, it was no big the deal. The same for thing me. happens. You yeah. can still, you know, take a shot and say, "Where are all the cars?" It yeah. Happens there too. Exactly. Yeah. You can. <laughs> you can always do that. You can always come up. Mm-hmm. And say, yeah. Exactly. But so more recently, you've started to uh, create a, a couple of different types of experiential things. One of the things that you did is you went out and and shot some of the holiday lights and things of that nature. And and actually, I I requested that of you. Because I, I knew that we were going to re, be recording this. Um, I sort of envisioned that we would record it in the November or uh, December time frame. We're recording this. It's actually January 7th right now. This won't be posted until later. But uh, so we're just past the holiday period. But you went out and shot some really cool, um, you know, holiday lights stuff. I'm not going to play the whole thing because this is like 13 minutes long. But uh, <laughs> Um, you know, the, you know, it's just, it's cool to see some of the, the neat, um, ways that the, the city, you know, you know, came out and really decorated for, uh, you know, for, for the lights and for the experience. Had, had you ever like been in a place that, you know, had this sort of feel before? Nope. Nope. Uh, the, the most I had, uh, experienced of that was living in Brazil and, there's still a lot of city squares, squares, uh, city centers in Brazil where they have places for people and they, they do some pretty nice light things there, but it's small, but never in the U S city have I experienced anything like this. Um, I remember before we moved here, I found some amateur, you know, content on, on the internet showing some of the things that they do, but, uh, that didn't really prepare me for seeing it myself here in person. I'm, I'm enjoying watching this here too. <laughs> yeah, it didn't it yeah. didn't prepare you for this. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's it you know on paper I on paper I'm sure that there's a cost assigned to this. And I'm sure that it gets pushed back and scrutiny, but you know what? We got to start spending our tax dollars and our money on people and and things like this people appreciate and and sometimes they don't come back to the city and tell them the things that they like the most. They come to the city and complain about the things that they hate the most. I mean, that's, that's the nature of people. They voice their opinions when they're mad about something, but people love now, this. Now, wait a minute, Brandon, you, you never do that. No, I never, <laughs> I never. <complain. laughs> yeah. People love this. Uh, okay. Again, there's nobody there. It was darn cold and (laughs) this is indiana where you know they're not quite as hardy i don't think but uh 
during the daytime, people are out here and, and I think this was late at night, actually. Um, yeah, I think one of these, you, you actually up. said that you went back out there and it was like, you know, like maybe even like two in the morning or something. It was really, really late. So. Yeah, I, I tend, when I go, if I go do a nighttime filming, I tend to go later and right. kind of wait for people to disappear. Yeah. Just yeah. easier for me to go up in here because, I mean, this Midtown Plaza is normally got a lot of people in it and I don't want to go cycling through there either. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Good, good stuff. So that that's that's one of the th- the the types of uh, things that you had been producing, you know, uh, a month or so ago, two months ago, and um, but then recently you started producing uh, something a little bit different. So give us the setup to the mo- most recent uh, set of videos that uh, that you've been working on. Uh, how to ride a bike in Carmel, Indiana. Yeah. A uh, simplistic title, but it conveys exactly what I want it to be. So I haven't lived here very long. I'm not a good tour guide, but I live a car light lifestyle and I go places by bike. And I, uh, I try to seek out, you know, everything that I think everybody else does, whether it's grocery stores or going to Lowe's, you know, the big box hardware store or Target. And since it's pandemic, super into curbside pickup. So I see a lot of people in Carmel biking for recreation, biking for fun, biking for uh, exercise and fewer people I see biking in the same way that I do. You know, it's a car, it's accomplishing things in life. And so I start to wonder, you know, maybe there are some people that are curious uh, that think, oh, you know, okay, get a utilitarian bicycle and Carmel has all this infrastructure. I don't know how to go places by bike. I can drive there and I see some paths, but I don't know what to do. So I just thought, well, I'll just throw a camera on myself and I will make videos where I start in a central location that Carmel lights. I don't know if that's what you'd call them. <laughs> no, uh, you know, for example, city center, I'll start there. And this video will be going to target to pick up a curbside order so that they can watch it in real time how to ride a bike from city center to target, for example. Um, So as long as they can figure out how to get to city center, as long as they watch my video, they know how to get there by bike. And then this really, I think that this really will play a part in the um, curious, but uh, cautious or uh, I forgot that phrase. I don't know. The, the people that are interested. Curious, but, but um, yeah, uh, they're, they're uh, curious, but concerned. Yeah. Or yeah, interested, yeah, the, but concerned. Yeah. There you go. Uh, that crowd. So, so that they can watch the video from their couch comfortably and say, ah, that's how you do that. Okay. I think I could do that. And then I just hope that it'll get somebody to be like, okay, I saw the route. It looks simple, looks safe. I can go do that now uh, because I've I've seen it through this this platform, this media, and that made me more comfortable or comfortable enough to do it. And so, I'm just going to develop this uh, this series of videos over I don't know long time. <laughs> it, I might make a handful of them, and it could be three four months before I make another. I don't know, um, but just trying to figure out how to show people who live here how to get to different places by bike that are part of everyday life um, that could, you know, bike replace a car trip. Yeah. Fantastic. Have, have you received any feedback yet from uh, folks in, in Carmel that have, have seen some of your work? No, not really. Um, Some of my stuff made it up. Uh, a while ago, but I got badgered by people that were like, oh, he just went through a stop sign on a trail. And I was, okay. (laughs) That that type of thing, which everybody runs into. Um, But I don't have a lot of exposure to the locals here quite yet. Um, A lot of them don't exist on Twitter and uh, people are still, you know, I, I have a good worldwide audience, but not a not a big local one. So I'm still working on it and I hope that that 
uh, expands because I'm making these videos primarily for the people who live here. Um, but also anybody else who wants to check out Carmel and who's curious. And, and this is the curious part. You know, you, you had mentioned that a, a big part of it is just getting out there and giving people an opportunity to, to interact with you. And, um, and, and that, that's exactly what ends up happening in, in this particular video at the end. So this is your trip to, to, to Kroger. But, uh, and I've got it kind of set up here, and I'm going to zoom out so that people can see the, the full thumbnail. And they'll see you've got your, your logo there. You've got the Kroger logo yeah. there. And it's a how, you know, how to bike in Carmel, Indiana. And, again, there's the setup to this is that, you know, it's just you writing, you know, it's, it, and until you have a conversation, um, you know, at the end, uh, there's basically no words spoken at this point in time. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll press play and I'll let you just sort of, you know, talk a little bit more about this latest generation, because this is even, this is much more recent than, you know, that how to ride, uh, that first one that you did. This one's, these are a little bit more compact and, and, uh, uh, have a different flair to them. So walk us through this new, newest version of what you're working on. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So it, well, it's more compact because, um, this was a shorter trip. <laughs> right. No, absolutely. But, um, yeah. So I'm, I'm starting to rethink how I want to do it. Uh, the, the other video where I was going to target, I started from a different point, but this little area right here on Monon Boulevard, I think everybody local can identify with. So I thought, oh, okay, I better use this central area as my starting point. Cause that'll speak to more people. Um, so yeah, I just, uh, <laughs> I took off from here and, uh, I, I have made quite a few videos in the past where I just take a real time ride and I talk cause I guess I'm pretty good at just talking to myself and <laughs> thinking that other people might find it entertaining. Uh, but I also think that being a bit of an, of an instructional video to help people, I should just keep my trap shut, let them you know, see what's going on, observe what's going on, take, take in time moving as it is and, and not, you know, be distracted by any nonsense that I'm spewing out of my mouth. So, um, yeah, here I am just starting there at Monon Boulevard in the center near that, uh, colorful sculpture and heading towards Kroger. And so I figure anybody on, you know, East, West, North, South of this area can figure out how to get there by bike. That's that's their issue. They can figure that out. But once they get there, they can see a route to get to Kroger if they want to place an order online or just go to Kroger, park their bike and go in. Um, that's the other nice thing about Carmel is that there's not always just a route to get somewhere. There's multiple routes, but I pick, you know, whatever appeals to me, whatever I think might show off some of our infrastructure keys better and um, just go that way and uh, say nothing, <laughs> try to, uh, since it's winter, I have the camera mounted up on my, uh, my winter hat. So I try to look at things that I think people are going to want to see. I may have gotten distracted by a cat. Uh, <laughs> but when I go through roundabouts and intersections, I try to look left and right and, and show people, here's what you're going to be encountering um, on your way there and things you might need to anticipate. And, and I'll refine that as time goes on. Um, but, uh, yeah, this is only the second video as of, as of right now. Um, and the Kroger ride to pick up, uh, pick up groceries. And again, I don't talk, but then when I got to Kroger, I wound up having to have a conversation because as usual, somebody wanted to talk about the bike. They thought it was interesting. So I thought I would leave that in there because, well, oh, yeah. that's interesting. Oh yeah, it, totally. It, it totally. In fact, um, I would even go so far as to say, it made the video. 
<laughs> so, mm-hmm. I, you know, it, it, and I'm going to fast forward this to towards the end so that uh, folks can actually experience that. I'll turn the volume up and and you and I can um, once once he comes out and starts talking, we, you and I can shut up and, and let people listen to this and, and uh, yeah. get, a, get a sense as to, to what that's like. So let's pull that up here. And you're so you're pulling in here. Yeah. It'll take a little bit to get there, but yeah, uh, he 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 doesn't come out right away. You actually no. get off and and do some photos, check in and, on the app. Yeah, yeah I, I don't show people my screen and don't want them to see all my cat pictures. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I check in on the app and then I just uh, kind of pan around the bike and show. Uh, and and while we're while area. we're at this area with the pickup, uh, you had posted something earlier this past week uh, about the pickup and, and this process, and you had some people asking, "Is like what 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 is this?" So explain mm, this. Oh real quick. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, people people on the other side of the Atlantic don't seem to understand all the goofy stuff we do over here, especially <laughs> like drive through ATMs. Here, I'll shut up now. It's time to be quiet. Yeah, here he comes. Here he comes. Oh, man, you're crazy. I'm warm. I am warm. You're a crazy man. I am crazy. Well, at least you got a hot chicken. You can Oops. eat some chicken on the on your. <laughs> if I get stranded. I don't know where you want to put that. I'll just. Put that up by your nose. I'll let it ride in the seat there. there you go. <laughs> now I got those little hot hands. <laughs> uh, you know what I'm talking about? Those warmers. Oh, yeah. I got them in my boot and in my gloves. Yeah, really. What a nice guy. We we had we actually had a, a conversation for about two minutes, but just yeah. for the sake of privacy, I thought, well, I'm going to cut that out. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Um, I cut it out. But he he had all these questions about the bike and. Um, it's typical. It happens all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and he was an older guy. Um, you know, it's pretty interesting. I, I do get people middle age asking me questions, but it's the teenagers and the seasoned citizen crowd. They're really attracted to these things and, and they're not afraid to ask questions. And I love it. And as, Especially when they say, you know, how oh, I'm sorry to bother you and ask you about all of it. And I'm like, no, let's talk. <laughs> and so I'll be happy to talk to somebody for a minute or 10 minutes, whatever they want. So uh, as we start uh, winding down a little bit here, we're going to end with Twitter. And uh, and we'll, we'll start off with some of your memes uh, that, that you have out oh, there and, and the bike Twitter memes. But uh then we'll transition over to you know some of the people that that have influenced you and, and that you follow that you've shared with me and and all that. So let's we'll pull this up here real quick. And this is just a, some of the more recent uh, <laughs> compilation of some of your different uh, different different memes that you have. So walk us through this process. An idea pops into your head, and you're just like, ah, I gotta get this out on Twitter. And so you 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 pull it together. Yeah. And, you put it out there, and and for those who may not be able to see the the, the writing on this, it might be a little small. Uh, it's ba- basically hash, hashtag bike Twitter memes. That's what that says. Yep, that's what I put on all of them. Bike Twitter memes. It's it's not a thing that existed. I just it just made sense, so I yeah. just put it together myself. I I don't know of anybody else that's doing that hashtag. Right. Um, yeah, these things just pop into my head. I don't sit down and try to write these out or, or anything. And, and, you know, I don't know. I mean, I'm not modacity. I'm not, not just bikes. I'm not bicycle Dutch. I'm just American feet. or just a regular person. And, and I, I like to get, I, I like to do my advocacy with, with, uh, as much humor as possible. <laughs> and I think that these memes, um, I don't know, they convey a point, but they also allow you to laugh and enjoy what we're doing here. Um, yeah. So quite literally, literally most of these things are just me, uh, bored, flipping my phone open, um, <laughs> pulling up the, the meme generator and looking at the templates. And, and then I, 
I have this thing that where you can fill in examples so you can understand yeah. a meme. Right. And, and I'm like, Ooh, I think I could rewrite this so that it's kind of funny and it applies to the topics I talk about. Right. Right. Um, so <laughs> yeah, most of the, most of these are done just like laying in bed or sitting on the couch or yeah. whatever else. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. There's no, there's no like real thought put into them, but some of them have taken off. It, yeah. I don't know. These resonate with people. Yeah. yeah. And I'm so well, happy what's about funny, that. You, what's funny is you just channeled both uh, Modacity, which of course is, is Chris and Melissa Bruntlett there in Delaware. Yeah, I said, I, said and, I, I said to myself, I wasn't going to, I wasn't going to pull them into this. They have enough attention. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you also pulled in uh, Jason Slaughter with not yeah. just bikes. And so, yeah. but both, both, uh, you know, Jason, uh, you know, has done a video about noise and, and, and pollution. In fact, he, he primarily did that, that video because Chris and Melissa have an entire chapter in their book about uh, noise and, and the fact that, you know, cities aren't inherently noisy. It's cars that make cities noisy yeah and so that's so kind of me, the meme yeah that's yeah let me just bit. say so that it's sure. it's those people that are yeah. that are you know so smart so professional so good at what they do and teaching the rest of us the fundamentals of of this whole topic so i take these things and i learn them and i internalize yep. them and then I turn them into this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so for those people who are having great. a hard time reading uh, w w what this says, uh, I'll let you you read the the small text that's across the uh, the horn there. Yeah, so I mean, you see the you see the photo, but uh, across the top it just says noise pollution, air pollution, Strodes, and Strodes is thank you, strong towns, and not just bikes. Uh, advertising, gas stations, injuries, death, speed, power, debt, parking lots, and so on and so forth. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it's like me trying to enjoy top. life and then cars blasting yep. you with the front horn. <laughs> mm -hmm. And, and, and that one took, that one took off. I mean, it just resonated with people. They're like, yeah. yes, this is funny. And, and yes, this is very true. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so checking well, a couple of boxes. Yeah. That, that's part of it. And, and, and I think there's that there, that's why it's so incredibly important that, you know, there that we have a little bit of humor we have an edge to it um it can resonate it can it, it can spread um but we we it's important not to cross the line into becoming uh a, you know an advocacy or an activist troll because yeah. once you do that then you're you're honestly no better than any other type of troll that's out there so yeah and yeah. John, this sp yeah. this speaks to even people that aren't even in in our advocacy realm because the, yeah. the the last one because um, something that crossed my mind the other day, which made me realize that I under as a for example as a child, I understood that cars caused these problems in my life, but I didn't understand it I, really. So so what popped into my head was I thought about this one time, and I, it's a video in my head you know, how you sometimes have those things from childhood. I remember riding in a car with my mom out to the outlet mall in this small town we lived in and it had just snowed as in the winter. And I rolled down the window as we were riding there. I was too young to drive. And I just remember how much I loved doing that. I, I used to always roll down the window when we were going somewhere after it snowed because it was so quiet. The The snow uh, yeah. dampened yeah. everything. It made yeah. the city quiet. And yeah. so on the subconscious level, I understood that, oh, I, I don't experience this a lot because our lives and our cities and whether they're a city of 2 million or 4,000 people, it's constant car noise. Yeah. yeah. And, and human beings miss that tranquility. Yeah. So even as a child, I, I, I understood this concept without fully understanding this concept. Yeah, 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 good stuff. We'll scroll down uh, to a couple more here. Um, you know, just, uh, again, various different uh, different memes, <laughs> different styles that you're doing. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, some, some are hit and miss, but... Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's all... And this is, wait a minute, this is from this one here? No, this is from today. This yeah, is from today. Yeah, that one's... <laughs> you, you, were, you were a busy guy today. That one's really meta. That's 
Yeah. That's that's cargo bike meta. Yeah, this that is doesn't cargo go bike with everybody. Meta. Here, I need so. to pull this back so we can see the whole scope of it all at once here. Jeez. There we go. Okay, yeah, yeah. that's cargo bike meta. <laughs> that's great. Uh, oh, and here's and here's what it here's everybody. what it's all about. There's yeah, the, that pep, now it makes more sense. App loaded up their huge yeah. huge thing full of beer kegs and I right. just thought, "Ooh, okay." <laughs> so when the, when the mood strikes, so so the mood struck, you know, either today or or whenever it was, and you're like, oh, I got to do a meme on this one. Uh, this is too mm-hmm. funny. We got to do this. How long does it take you to put this together? Minute or two. Okay. Yeah. And so by the it's time like, the creativity hits, you're just like, boom! I can I can oh, pull yeah. this stuff together. It, yeah. If I see a, if I see a template that I yeah. know that I can write, like I'll either write it once and boom, it's out, or yeah. I'll write it twice. And then be like, okay, I think that's good enough. And right. like, I care if it's not and right. just put it out there and it's popular. It's not. And so far people really like those things. And yeah, I'm yeah, glad yeah. that it makes people laugh because we're, we're in doomsday nowadays. So yeah. if I can uh, break your doom scrolling, then uh, I'm happy to do so. Yeah. Yeah. So l- let's talk a little bit about some of your, your influences uh, that are out there. So uh, Enrique yeah. uh, out of Copenhagen was one of the individuals that you had mentioned was uh, formative for you. Uh, yep. Talk a little bit about Enrique here. Yeah. So the whole point of w- the people we're going to call out here is because, and, and nothing, nothing against all the big accounts, the people that teach me and influence me, like, you know, Modacity, Bicycle, Bicycle Dutch, Dutch Cycling Embassy, Leonard, is it? People know them, okay? So we've done that. Fine. Um, but I want to I want to highlight some other people that maybe don't have the notoriety or or the audience um, that some of them do, and mm-hmm. and and that people that I follow and my follower list, the people that I follow is very short. Um, but when I put somebody in there, it's because they're giving me content that keeps me going, and I find very valuable. So uh, yeah, I again is it. Enrique, Enric Lundorf. <laughs> I don't know, the biking Viking out of Copenhagen. Um, yeah. And there is somebody out of Copenhagen who can be quite negative and I won't bring him up, but uh, Enric. I won't either. Puts, <laughs> and neither will Jason. Uh, Enric puts out wonderful stuff out of Copenhagen. He's so positive. Um, and I don't know, you know, this isn't necessarily his best tweet maybe, but it was just one that I thought, hey, I love this. Um, so that's why I linked to it. And, uh, yeah, he, he's an inspiration. Um, he definitely, he definitely highlights the Denmark aspect of things and he does some other traveling, but he's one that you should follow. Um, for sure. Basically anybody that we're going to talk about from here, I would, I would give a follow if you're on Twitter, um, or whatever platform they exist on. Yeah. This one, uh, I pronounce most things due to my Knowledge of Portuguese, so Commute de Paris <laughs> is my best guess, but out of Paris. And um, they're, they're really good at putting up media, lots of videos, lots of pictures, which I think is the most important way to get to people <clears throat> showing off Paris. Um, so you can scroll through their profile and see so many cool things that, yeah, show how things are changing there. And uh, this next one up uh, that's going to come up here. Oh, boy. Delph last night. <clears throat> Yeri. 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 <laughs> I don't know where he's from. He lives, I think he lives in Delft. Yeah. He, he might be from Finland. He might be from Germany. I, I love this guy. He, yeah. His account is very small. He has like 500-ish followers on Twitter. But okay. Everything he's putting up. Um, mostly pictures. I don't know if there's many videos. Um, everything he's putting up is really interesting. And then every time, like I see something super interesting in my feed that was, you know, liked or retweeted, I see who it was by. It was him. Um, if you're on Twitter, give him a follow. That's, he's such an interesting person. And yeah, so he, I think he's in Delft. Same with Natalia. Uh, and everybody, probably saw Natalia on your uh, podcast recently. She's, she's so interesting. I, I only became aware of her right when she moved to Delft. 
somebody liked or retweeted a post of hers that was saying, oh, she just arrived in Delft and was going to be at TU Delft. And her photo that she took and put up was interesting. So I thought, oh, okay, I'll follow this account and see where it goes. I can always unfollow if, you know, it doesn't turn into anything or turns dormant. Her account's awesome. She writes wonderful tweets, uh, puts up some really cool pictures. Yeah, you got to follow Natalia. <laughs> the filming feats here. So if I had to sum him up, I would call him the bicycle Dutch understudy. <laughs> He's in Utrecht. Um, he makes a lot of videos, takes pictures. Again, media heavy, which I think is most important. And he shows off that Dutch infrastructure. So another Twitter follow. All right. So yeah, we we have to go further north because we, we oh, we've got to get north. some we've got to get some uh, some cold uh, weather stuff in. Pekka, yes, Pekka up in Oulu, Finland. Um, Oulu is bike mecca of the north, bike mecca Pekka. So um, Pekka does a wonderful job at showing off how. Winter is um, not an impediment to people cycling. Um, it just comes down to the infrastructure, and especially in winter, uh, key is maintenance. If you don't do maintenance, all the infrastructure in the world is not going to mean anything. So Pekka has a YouTube channel where he has taken us on a bunch of live tours, and uh, you can go pull up those old videos. But then his Twitter uh, has a bunch of really amazing media on there. So yeah, go check out Pekka's stuff. Yeah. And just to be clear, I mean, what we were just looking at right there, if you couldn't read that, that was the parking area for the school. All mm -hmm. of those bikes there were all the kids who rode, rode to bike to school. Amazing. Yeah. And Amazing. what was it? What did it say? Like negative 17 out or something? I mean, yeah. Negative, yeah, negative 17. 17. I mean, you know, American parents would be like, oh, my poor precious. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's don't freeze. <laughs> so now we're going to now we're going to come back over here to, to North America and, and hang oh, out no. a little bit. Oh, boy. Yes. The Plain Bicycle Project. I love these guys. The, the, this is why I want to go to Canada, just because I want to go to their shop and visit them. So they... Uh, Winnipeg. Yeah, they're in Winnipeg. They go to the Netherlands. They get all these old Dutch bicycles, put them in a container, ship them over to Winnipeg, and then sell them to locals. And it's about using Dutch bikes to, you know, reframe what the bicycle can be and what it is uh, in a North American perspective. And their shop is set up with uh, some really amazing things like you're seeing here in this video to see what it's like to um, cycle in the Netherlands. And uh, yeah, they, they need more, um, they need more no notoriety up in, up in Canada. And then they need to come down here to North America, to Chicago and some other places and, and redo this whole thing. Um, we need more Dutch bikes in North America. The, this this will help reframe the perspective on bicycles if we do more projects like what they're doing. So Plain Bicycle, check them out, Google them, go to their website, go up to Canada and pick one up and bring it home. Yeah, and uh, you know, head on over to the Active Towns website and uh, check out the the interview that I did with uh, Erin Riediger with the Plain Bicycle Project, uh, and she yeah. has her own podcast. Uh, outlining yep. it's a short series of uh of it's a wonderful podcast it's a wonderful she does a wonderful job yeah. of storytelling and she puts it all yeah. together and uh uh just you know in fact we're going to get her back on we're going to get uh, the folks from a uh, plane bicycle program on because it's the project is just a tremendously in powerful po project in the sense that it, it it takes something as simple as a basic bicycle a plain bicycle nothing fancy it just it's upright. It just gets you from point A to point B. Um, but it also does something. It does something. Incredibly important. Tell us what that yes. is. Yeah. So Erin, I, I really hope that she can find something to restart that podcast, whether it's just an episode or two. I don't care. It is just so enjoyable. Um, I know it's hard to continue something so niche as that, but yeah, please get that up again. 
even if it's just one episode. Yeah. All right. Here we are. But, now, Dustin. Who's Dustin? Okay. Now we're, we're now we're down in America. Uh, <laughs> Dustin is a DOT engineer in Michigan. Um, he's a young guy. Uh, he gets it. I mean, he's he's doing the work. He understands design because, well, he studies Dutch design, but he's trying to figure out how to get it done here in North America, or at least our best version of it here in North America in the U.S. And he recently imported a Dutch bicycle, so that's all you need to know about him. He gets it, and and if, if Dustin is our future, then we're going to be set up. Uh, so give Dustin a follow on Twitter. I don't know where else he exists, if he has another platform, but yeah, he's... He's a bright mind and we need him. Yeah. Good stuff. All right. London Bicycle Cafe. London Bicycle Cafe. So this is a bigger topic for me. So there are some bike shops that understand how valuable Twitter is as a platform. London Bicycle Cafe is one of those. Uh, Arlie, whenever she had uh, her shop out in Colorado before they moved, she got it too. But London Bicycle Cafe they um they have they put up so much good content it's a lot of original content or retweeted stuff that just um shows that they want a better future for all of us and and they understand that e-cargo bikes e-bikes are going to play a massive part in that so uh they're on instagram too maybe some other things um but i only follow them on twitter because that's the only place i play around um Excellent content over there at the London Bicycle Cafe. Those guys, um, gold. Good so stuff. I, I have two comments about these these photos that you have here. Is one uh, fake London? Wow. Mm, Jason. There you go. Two. <laughs> why are these these bikes mangling and eating these other bikes? Yeah. So we're just showing the versatility. I mean, we got what. A turn Vectron, which is an e-bike, folded up, and this is the picture on the left, and the holder on the back of a turn GSD, yeah, GSD. So e-bike hauling an e-bike. Same thing on the right. We got the Urban Arrow hauling, I think another Vectron. Yeah. So, what do you there need you a car go. for? <laughs> just, just N plus one multiple e-bikes. I love it. I love it. I'm not guilty of that at all. All right. So we're going to hold on just a second here because we're going to pull up Bike Curious. So Yay. Yeah. If you want me to preface Bike Curious. Please do. Go for it. So we are going to have to. I told Jason I wasn't going to bring him up uh, and he was happy about that. But sorry, I have to bring him up. The only reason I know about Bike Curious is because of Jason. I was watching one of his live streams and he started talking about Bike Curious in San Francisco on Twitch and go check it out. It's really cool and blah, blah, blah. And I didn't know anything about Twitch. I thought it was just for people playing video games. But there's a lot of people that do real life live streaming there. And Bike Curious is one of those people. And he's, geez. Uh, So he's in San Francisco. He has quite literally, in my opinion, and many others, the best live streaming setup on a bike in the world. Uh, he has it set up to give this video game-ish third, or, yeah, third person view. Um, the camera is back here. He's got this screen up front so that he can read chat. So people type in and talk to him and he can read all their messages and then talk back to them and everything. He is every Sunday on Twitch, uh, Google the times <clears throat> And it's just amazing. Here we are at Golden Gate Bridge. Um, just last Sunday, we rode across Golden Gate Bridge. Uh, we do a bunch of other stuff. We go see the full house houses. I think they're called the Seven Sisters. I don't know. Maybe that's a star constellation. Uh, you remember the show Full House, those those iconic houses in San Francisco. We go see those. We, we do a bunch of things. We ride around for three hours every Sunday, San Francisco. And he's... It's family friendly. Let the kids watch. Uh, John does a, an amazing job of trying to keep everything, you know, so that you can let the family watch the stream. Um, hmm. Really good. So go check out by Curious on Twitch. This was just a cleanser. So something that I'm getting into 
in these dire times is trying to just find a mental escape and not being able to travel. Um, Fabio is a train engineer, to the best of my understanding, uh, in Switzerland. I forgot the exact, uh, the out, some, the out, some Alpine railway. Um, and he puts out just pictures and videos that just make you think I hate where I live. Uh, and this is just part of his everyday life, his everyday job. Um, so if you're looking for just a mental escape, he, I think he has a, he has a YouTube channel, his Twitter. I don't know what else he exists on, but um, yeah, check him out. It's it's really nice. I've I've just sat there watching some of his train videos before and just mentally escaped to it. I mean, it, and now it's on the list to go to if if we ever get the world under control. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good stuff. Okay, and to close us out here, we're gonna pull up uh, Chris and Propel. Chris. Chris and Propel, they're just another bike shop doing amazing things, making an amazing YouTube um, channel. Uh, whether it's back here in the U.S., he's just highlighting and talking about the cargo bikes, the e-bikes that he's selling, or in this case, he's on a road trip over uh, in the Netherlands. He, he, him and uh, his his camera person, Tara, they're just an amazing crew, and um they put together some really, really inspirational and informative media. So if you're curious about e-bikes, you're curious about e-cargo bikes, check out Propel's YouTube channel. It is a wealth of information and it's enjoyable to consume in the way that they put it forward. So I, I hope to meet them one of these days and go on a ride too. Um, yeah, a- amazing work. And what's great about his style, him and Tara, you know, they're, they're filming and and they're doing a lot of this stuff and it's great because they they include some of the bloopers you know to it as mm-hmm. well like they, they 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 had a couple of falls during the uh, the filming yeah. and they're just like oh no keep them in there <laughs> so mm-hmm. it was great yeah he he hit a leaf patch and and went down yeah but <laughs> hey you don't need to edit all that out yeah well might have, keep it real keeping it real mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. well hey speaking of keeping it real um Thank you so much for for coming back onto the podcast. Now, is, is there anything on your list? Because I know you wanted to cover a lot, but we've already been talking for eighty some odd minutes. Is there anything that's just burning that you you think we have to end this with and and leave the audience with? Oh, you don't have ninety more minutes. I do. I don't think the audience does. <laughs> yeah, that's your, I don't know. yeah, we'll do we'll do a part three someday. I don't know what we'll talk about. We'll, we'll figure something out. You know, I don't know. Um, I don't really have anything burning to, to put out there, but I, I just do want to say thank you to everybody who, uh, you know, watches the amateur content that I'll put out on YouTube or that interacts or doesn't interact and comes along for my Twitter stuff. Um, I'm blown away by the audience that has just continued to get bigger and bigger and bigger, especially because this is just a hobby and I'm not a professional. I'm not Leonard. I'm not, you know, the Bruntlets. I don't have an education in this. I'm just, I just, I just fell into it, you know, a handful of years ago and thought it was really cool. And maybe it's more than that, but uh, yeah, just thought, Oh, this is what I want the world to become. And started talking about it and, and using what I feel is the most powerful um way to speak to other people and that's through pictures and video words aren't going to get it done but pictures and video just speaks to people and um yeah I'm, I'm really happy that it's it's done what it's done and you know thanks i appreciate it yeah well and thank you thank you for uh for putting yourself out there, thank you for um, you know sharing these beautiful images with all of us. Uh, again, you know, you know, nine thousand followers on Twitter—that's nothing to sneeze at. I mean, it's that's fantastic. You're you're, doing, mm. you're garnering an audience, and you're getting some video out there, folks. Please subscribe to to, to his YouTube channel. Um, it, it's it's a very interesting feel, and I get the sense based on seeing where your early stuff was and where you're going, it will continue to evolve and and it, you know 
and get better as time. I know mine have yeah. certainly, you know, improved a great deal in the, in the five plus years that I've been working on it. Heck, they've been improving a lot just in the year that I've been doing YouTube. So, uh, yeah, and I'm going stuff. places. I learned how to make YouTube thumbnails the other night. So look out people. I mean, a million subscribers, here we come, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> And, and John, thank you. Uh, you're, you're doing an excellent job. I've, well, you and I only really connected when you came to Carmel and yeah. I'm glad to have formed a friendship with you, but I've, you know, been watching your platform, especially your YouTube, uh, start to grow and you put some serious effort and work into preparing for your interviews. It's damn impressive. So thank you for that. It's so easy to talk to you whenever you interviewed Tatiana, she, Said, oh, that was easy. That was enjoyable. And yeah, you're a true professional at this. And especially in a topic that is only going to get more and more important, um, of course, worldwide, but especially in North America, where we are just, we need it. We really need it. And, and yeah. what you're doing is going to help us get there. So thank yeah. you for doing what you're doing. You're, you're doing an excellent job and it's going to get better. So everybody... Go subscribe to Active Towns. Hit that like. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and it's so and it's so funny too because uh, you know so many of us that are in this space right now, um, we're all experiencing a great deal of enthusiasm, and uh, and it's great to to ride this wave. Um, because you're, you're absolutely right. There's a sense of urgency. We do need to move forward with these things. There's so many different reasons. It's not just one singular topic or issue. Uh, so it, it is wonderful to see new energy. Um, I, I feel like I've been doing this for 30 some odd years uh, in, in mm. the sense that I've been in, you know, the this behaviorist space for this long. Uh, but only the last 15 years, you know, specifically looking at this. And just for me, I mean, just this whole <laughs> fact that this... The, the YouTube platform and the, and, the, and the Twitter platform for me really has been just in the last year, uh, you know, since you and I connected, I've, you know, mm -hmm. doubled down and said, you know what, I need to be focusing more on this. Saw you in mm -hmm. June, then it brought Jason Slaughter with Not Just Bikes in in July, and suddenly the YouTube channel blew up, and I'm like... This is where we need to, to, to produce the, uh, the content, get the energy out there, try to connect with folks that are interested in this, um, maybe just curious and wants mm -hmm. to learn more um, and good stuff. Love it. Yeah. Thank you, oh, sir. So sorry, Jason. I told you that we were not going to invoke your name and I lied. Yeah, we, we, we lied. Yeah. He's, he's too good of a character. He, he likes to say that he's not the advocate and, and he, he's, you know, but yeah. it, the, the reality is, is, is. The Not Just Bikes channel, folks, if you haven't seen that already, get on over there. Take a look at it. Um, he's also going to be out on uh, other platforms as well. Uh, pop on over, see my interview with him from December 24th. Just super, super good stuff. Um, it's making a difference. And, you know, all of this is making a difference. And, and really, it's just a matter of embracing folks that do get a little bit curious. And hey, Brandon, thank you so very much for coming back on the Active Towns uh, podcast. It's, it's such a pleasure having you. Yep. Thank you, John. And we will do part three one of these days when we figure out what we're going to talk about. Absolutely. Well, well, we'll probably, you know, do some sort of a celebration. Uh, you may, Maybe after you hit uh, 1000 on the YouTube channel. Oh, well, OK. I guess. I mean, if this is going to be around in 20 years, then let's we'll plan on it. <laughs> well, you're, you're narrowing in on what, 400 now? Yeah, well, we'll see what happens. It, it, it's just I'm always happy time. to come back. And, and, I, and if you stuck around to watch this, thank you. Glad. I hope you enjoyed it. Get on over there. Subscribe to his channel. Follow him on Twitter if you're not already. One of the few in the world that are not. Thank you very much once again, Brandon. All right. Thank you, John. Whew, you made it all the way to the end. <laughs> Thank you all so much for tuning in to this episode with Brandon. It really means so much to me. I hope you got a few pearls and nuggets from this chat. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up, share it with a friend, and leave a comment below. And heck, if you like it enough to want more, then please be sure to hit the subscribe button and ring that notification bell down below. Well, that's all for this week's episode. So until next time, this is John signing off by wishing you much activity, health, and happiness. Cheers. <laughs>